Hi guys, just a quick video today. We're going to look at Rockwell hardness test files. Um, I feel like if you're starting out in knife making, these things are a must have. It's a step up from just using whatever file you've got sitting around your workshop to check that you've hardened your blades. So, Gamaco is now stocking the Volorb brand, which is why I'm doing this video to help people work out what they're all about. Volorb's a really well respected company when it comes to files. They make all sorts of files, like, you know, bastard files, jewelers files, uh, little needle files and all that sort of thing for doing, um, from a knife making point of view, you could use them for doing uh, vine work down the back of blades and tidying those up. Today I'm just going to talk about these hardness files. So uh, these measure the Rockwell scale of hardness. It came about around, I think, 1906 in Connecticut maybe, and it, uh, in a bench mounted system that measures the Rockwell C scale, it basically takes a differential uh, penetration depth in the same spot to find out how much uh, the steel has responded to a very high load versus very low load, and it gives you a measure of the tensile strength of the steel. Um, so in saying that, you just got to remember that the hardness isn't the be-all and end-all of um, you know the measure of a knife. Uh, there's a lot of other things that come into whether a knife's going to perform well, like the edge geometry. Um, and you know all that sort of stuff so these files come in a neat blue box just open that up here so there's the case they come in I recommend keeping them in the case just you know why things in workshops get messy they get knocked over and it says here that it manages from 40 Rockwell C up to 65 um, and that's a, a good place to be testing if you're blacksmithing and knife making. Generally, you'll probably be using the 65 and 60 file though. So open it up. It's got instructions at the top on how to use them, and then the set of six files going from hardest, which is black, and red, which is the uh, 40 Rockwell being the softest. So these were popular because. Uh, the bench mounted Rockwell hardness testing machines, which Gamaco also sells, are a little big and cumbersome. So if you need to go out and check a heat affected zone around a weld on a bridge, you can't very well take that piece of the bridge into your workshop and test it and put it back in situ. So the, these are meant to be a non-destructive form of testing. Um, so the advantage this has over just any old file you've got in your workshop is that it will actually give you kind of a, a rough range of your hardness rather than just knowing that it's the steel's harder than it was before when you scratched it with the file before you heat treated it. These will actually tell you which range of hardness um, the steel's coming in at. So they've got a curious little shape to their end um, and that's so that you can get into curves and corners and that sort of thing. So again, you're testing welds, but um, generally it's just a flat bit that you want to be using when you're testing knives. So. When it comes to testing knives, the most important thing is to have a nice clean surface that you can scratch. Putting a scratch into the hardened scale that your blade will be covered in before you do um, any cleaning up, that's not going to give you a accurate result really. It's basically going to give you kind of like a misleading idea of what's going on in that steel. Scale tends to be very hard, so it can, if it's thick enough, you know, the, the file might skate off those. Um, or if you've taken the scale off, uh, you could still be working on the decarburized part of the steel on the outside. So it's best to take off um, as much as you can before tempering, just to see if you've got full hardness. But um, as an example, I'm going to test some soft ADCA V2 and then I'm going to test some blades that I've just quenched and ground back and you'll be able to hopefully hear the difference in the way the steel responds to having the file skated across it. This piece of ADCA V2 has a D edge on it um, and I've cleaned that up a bit from how it came off the shelf uh, just to be sure to be sure that I was testing a nice fresh clean surface. Um, and I've, I've kept it nice and rounded so I, I wouldn't have any misleading feelings like it was catching on an edge rather than actually being held up by the steel. So let's listen to the difference between a piece of soft from the factory steel versus some hardened ADCR V2. So I can feel that 
it's filing like soft steel. Like there's just no two ways about it. It's um, it's cutting in so much I can actually see it removing steel. It feels dull and kind of gummy, and you can hear it's got a very low sort of sound. Now when I test one of the blades that I've hardened, I'm just going to put it off the edge there, and with about the same amount of force. So the maximum attainable hardness of ADCR V2 is I think around about 65 Rockwell. So I've got no higher hardness file that I can test this with. Oh, that is not true. I have some Val Titan files by Valorb. And I think they're 72 Rockwell. So maybe I'll go get one of those and we'll test that and see if um, see if that will cut the ADCRV too. Okay, so these files should be a shitload harder. There's a little round one. Let's throw them back in. I might use the square one. Yep. Definitely tell that these Val Titan needle files are much harder. Um, it's still skating over fairly well, which means this steel must be pretty close to the hardness of this file um, But the file is a little harder You can hear that difference there to the original file So I pretty confidently say that this steel is around 65 Rockwell, which is maximum hardness so now the other advantage here is that you can also check how far down your tempering has gone so it's obviously not accurate to one rockwell but it'll tell you the range you've gotten to and once you've had a bit of practice with these you can feel if something's close to the file you're at maybe being just a little softer like i just did with those val titan files um so you will you will get the feeling about where the hardness is because the bracketing is such that it's this one 65 Rockwell, this one 60. So if the number 60 cuts your steel and number 65 doesn't, you can say that you're between 60 and 65, um, but you will be able to kind of notice, uh, you know, just how far either side of a file you are with a bit of practice. So I'll go get a blade that I've actually tempered and we'll see how far back down that came. Okay, so here we've got two blades. Now, this one's obviously a dead giveaway because I've just tested it on something in the workshop and decided it wasn't fit to go ahead with. Um, so I'll take the 65 Rockwell file. Sounds pretty dull. Remember, these ones have been quenched, but they haven't been tempered. So comparing that to this blade here made of 1075, you can definitely tell that there's a big difference between the hardness of these two steels. And then if we test on this piece of stainless, that's just gouging the edge away. This steel didn't harden at all. But let's see how low it goes and um, I'll test that with the 40 Rockwell file. We'll see how much it takes away. So even the 40 Rockwell file is doing quite a bit of damage to that edge. It's scratching it all over the place. So, without having to do something like that, I can ascertain that this blade didn't harden fully. Um, so that might tell you that you can go back and reheat treat the steel if you're confident that you can keep decarb and all that sort of thing to a minimum. Um, but anyway, the files have helped us determine that as it is, this knife is scrap. Now, if we use the 40 Rockwell file on the 1075 blade, that's skating off. So we know it's somewhere between the 65 and the 40. So you can work your way backwards until you find a file that will cut. So here's the 45. Still skating off. Now the 50. Sounds about the same. Now the 55. It feels like it just about wants to cut. And then the 60. Okay, so the 60 is definitely taking away some steel there. So I would have tempered this 1075 on about 
200 degrees um, for a knife like this. Um, it's still fairly hard. Um, if I was going for more of a, um, a knife that could be beaten into wood and that sort of things, I would have gone tougher rather than harder. But yeah, that's the, that's the next step up from just using a workshop file to determine your hardness. I really recommend them in the shop, especially when you're new and you're trying to you know, get your head around the whole heat treating thing. And then you know, further on down the track, get a bench mounted one and it will tell you very accurately exactly how hard your steel is. Um, but, you know, something to work towards. Thanks, guys.